You want to find that drive and focus that has you locked in and on fire every single day? My book, The Mirror Motivation, will do it for you. I bought a copy for you. You take care of the shipping. The book is free. Click the link down there. I got you. Stay all day. You are now tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you have expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all of this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. This is the go-getter energy that moves you to make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. Putting all this together, what you get is the mindset, the method, the philosophy, the book, the podcast known as Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. Today's topic is how to be a person of substance. This is an interesting topic that I want to talk about here today because there's a, I mean, there, there are a lot of people out there in the world, right? We can agree with that. And we're going to come across a whole lot of them in our travels and on our journeys. And a person of substance is, this is not really about the other people that we're going to come across, even though I'm going to mention that a little bit here today, as I do every episode, just to give you some examples and help you have a, help you have a, a little bit of a litmus test for gauging your own. But this is really about us as people. How can you be this person of substance? And just so we're all on the same page, you understand where I'm coming from here. Let's get a definition of this, this saying, being a person of substance. What exactly do I mean when I'm saying this? The definition, I got this from... Actually, somebody wrote this on Quora, which is a website where people post questions and they can crowdsource the answers. Definition of a person's substance, quote, someone who strives to live a life that means something and who chooses to participate rather than be a spectator in life in order to be part of the solution as opposed to part of the problem. Now, that's the close quote. That's the core definition that someone wrote. I'm going to give you another definition coming from me. That one matters, but also take this one into account. A person who makes room, who makes a room better just by being there, no matter what room it is. A person of depth. Now, several, about a couple weeks ago, did an episode called inch, An Inch Wide and a Mile Deep, where we talked about inches and miles. Person of substance is an individual who can go an inch wide and a mile deep in the area in which they're interested, but also a mile wide and an inch deep in other areas as well. This makes you a person of substance because then you can interact with different types of people. You can add value to any room, no matter who's in that room or who's not in that room. A person who makes a room better just by being there. Your presence makes the situation better than your absence will make the situation be. If you're a person who, when you leave the room, things get better, okay, you're the opposite of a person of substance. You need to fix that as soon as possible. Easiest way to do that is to keep listening to me every day and to go into the game group. So in addition to the one that you get every day here, you can also get access to the other thousand and listen to them at your leisure. I would suggest you do it as soon as possible if you're a person who makes the room worse just by walking into the room. But today is all about making yourself a person of depth. A person who makes a room better just by being in that room, even if you don't know anybody in the room, even if you're in a room full of people who you never met before, even if all of them know each other and nobody knows you, you should still be making that room better. And if you're a person of substance, you will do that. So in other words, this is how you become a value adding individual. And I think if you're listening to a show called Work On Your Game, if you've listened this far into the episode, that you either are or you plan on being a value adding individual, meaning people are better off dealing with you than not dealing with you. And if that's not you and you don't want to be that person, you can turn this off right now, I'll save you some time. But if you plan on being that person, listen up, listen close, take notes and gauge yourself, measure yourself against the points that I'm going to make here today. And if you find yourself coming up short on any of these points, don't feel bad about yourself. Because look, maybe this never occurred to you before to think of it from this angle. That's one of the, the purposes of me doing the show is I'm going to give you some angles that you might not have thought about before. Because if you already thought about them and you're already doing them, then you wouldn't need to listen to me. But also understand that human beings are imperfect. And the whole purpose of us being alive is to advance, is to grow, is to get better, is to continue to be a work in progress. So if you find yourself coming up short on any or all of these points, that's OK. Now, the fact that a year from now you're still short on all of those points, that would not be OK. So it's the fact that you become aware of it today and then you start working on it today. That's the outcome that we're after. So let's get into our points. Again, the topic is how to become or how to be a person of substance in life. Point number one, keep learning. From whatever you have learned to this point, keep learning. No living person is a finished product. No one who's listening to me right now is a finished product. The only finished products that we know of are people who are dead, are deceased individuals. 
They're the only ones who are finished products. Is it possible for them to get better? If you're alive, that means it's possible for you to improve. It's possible for you to keep learning. It's possible for you to keep growing. All right, if you're not growing physically, you can grow mentally. You can grow emotionally, spiritually. In every other way besides physically, you can continue to grow no matter how old you are. If you are alive, you are a work in progress forever. You are an indefinite work in progress if you are alive. So how do you keep learning? What are some things that you can do? Most important thing I would suggest, read. Yes, you can listen to podcasts. You can even go uh, ascribe to some audio books, but I suggest that you read. Read articles, read books, read, study, take an online course, converse with people who, from whom you can learn. Talk to people who are smarter than you, who know things that you don't know, who have experiences that you don't have, who have been places that you have not been. Talk to those people. Ask them questions. When they talk, shut the hell up and listen. That's a way that you can keep learning. Also, on the other hand, converse with people from whom they can learn from you. Converse with people that you can teach. Because as I said before, you don't really know something until you've done it and you don't really know it until you can teach it. If you think you know something, but you never taught it to anyone else, you don't know it yet. If you really want to prove you know something, you should be able to stand in front of another person or a room full of people or a virtual audience of people and teach what you know and they can understand it and they can go do something with it. That's when you really know things. So you need to converse with people who can teach you and people whom you can teach and with people who are on the same level as you. So these are the three levels. I did an episode on this. This is probably in the first 100 episodes of the Work On Your Game podcast back in 2016 which you can listen to in the game group membership. But what I talked about was the three people you should always be paying attention to in life. One of those people is a person that you can learn from. That person will be a coach or a mentor or a teacher, a person that knows more than you and you learn from them. So when you're around them, you be quiet unless you're asking a question and then you shut up and listen and learn. Then there's the person who's on the same level as you, but they're doing things a little bit differently from you. Maybe they're doing a little bit better, maybe a little bit worse, but they're not just like you. So you can learn from them. You two can bounce things off of each other. They can learn from you. You can learn from them. Y'all can help each other out. There's some synergy there because y'all are at roughly the same place. Then there's the person who's where you used to be. The person who's sitting in a seat today that you sat in six months ago, that person, you can help them out. You can be a mentor or a coach or a teacher to them because you are giving them the example. You're telling them the things that you wish you knew when you were where they are. And that's how you get better at knowing what you know because you've been able to teach it to another person. Because we think we know things until we teach it to somebody else. And then as soon as you start teaching things to other people, you realize the holes in your knowledge. You realize that maybe you don't know it as well as you thought you did. Or maybe, maybe you know it really well, but you're not good at explaining it to other people. If you can't explain it, then you don't know it. So these, these are the ways that you can continue to learn. So teaching other people is also a way of learning because you learn how to articulate what you know. You learn how to communicate it. If you can't communicate what's in your head, then what's in your head doesn't really have much value because you can't give it to anybody else. That just makes sense, right? So this is the way, this is how, these are all ways rather that you will continue to learn. Remember that you don't know everything. Always know that you don't know everything. Question your beliefs. Question your opinions. Be open to having your beliefs and your opinions challenged. People of substance, ladies and gentlemen, are always seeking growth. These are all ways to grow. Reading, learning, teaching, bouncing ideas off of others, listening to others who know more than us, questioning ourselves, questioning our opinions, asking ourselves where we got our opinions and beliefs from. Many of us have opinions and beliefs. We don't even know where the hell they came from. And if they're challenged, we don't have anything to back them up with. A person of substance is willing to admit this. A person of substance is willing to change their beliefs and opinions when they get new information or when they get some information. Is there are a lot of people these days, I think you can agree, walking around with a whole lot of beliefs and opinions and they have no information to back up these beliefs and opinions. They just believe it. You ask them how they know, everybody knows it. Well, I just know. I don't want to talk about it. All right, don't be that person. All right, people of substance don't use those phrases when their beliefs and, and opinions are challenged. They're willing to share where they got their beliefs and opinions from, and they're willing to change them when they get new information or they examine the information from a different perspective. You can look at the same information a different way, and all of a sudden you have a different belief about that information. Have you ever experienced that? If you have not, then that's a mistake that you're making because you're only looking from th at things from one angle. All right, person of substance looks at things from multiple angles and understands that there may be multiple quote, right, close quote, answers to the same question. These are all parts of learning. This is all part of your education. And understand something, ladies and gentlemen, most of this you're not going to get in school. Most of this you don't get in the classroom. You don't get this from uh, some dusty ass textbook that you had to buy from a, a college library. You paid $65 and they give you $8 back at the end of the semester. 
you don't get it from there. Uh, you get these from being out in the world and having real life interactions and real life experiences. This is how a person of substance is a lifelong learner. You should tattoo that phrase on your forehead. Lifelong learner. All right? School is not the end of your education. It's the beginning of your education. Because now at this point, you're no longer in a controlled environment where they feed you exactly what you're, quote, supposed, close quote, to know. Now you got to go learn. You got to go figure out on your own what you're supposed to know. And you need to know it. And you'll be responsible for it. And you'll have real life consequences when you don't. And or you're unable to uh, convey what you know. All of this is part of the learning process. We're still on point number one here. People of substance, I'll say it again, are always seeking growth because they are lifelong learners. People of substance do not allow themselves to stagnate. People of substance are into positive change. And they're always seeking positive change because, as I said, every one of us is a work in progress. So if you're working on yourself and you're learning and you're getting smarter and you're getting better at what you do and you're breaking down some old bad ideas and rebuilding them with new ideas, you're changing. Those are changes that are happening within you. So a person of substance is never allowing themselves to stay in the same spot and trying to maintain the status quo, so to speak, of life. That is impossible to maintain the status quo. Right, the status quo will be changed whether you want it to or not. A person of substance is active in changing their status quo. All right, they don't allow the world to change the status quo on them. They change the status quo themselves. They move before the world forces them to move. Point number two. Today's topic is how to be a person of substance. You got to have somewhere to go. People of substance have a place to be. They are going somewhere. They have aims. They have outcomes. They have desires. What did we talk about in yesterday's episode? I told you that Napoleon Hill said, and think and grow rich. The starting point of success for any person in any endeavor, in any field, doesn't matter how old or young, male, female, what you're doing, starting point of success is having a definite chief aim. In other words, having an outcome. What are you doing? Where the hell are you going? Do you even know? If you don't know where you're going, you cannot become successful. It's impossible. You cannot reach success if you don't have a goal. People of substance have somewhere to go, metaphorically speaking. Maybe you literally got somewhere to go. You got a meeting to be at. But I mean, metaphorically, you have somewhere to go. There is some reason why you're doing all the things that you're doing. You have goals. What are you working towards right now? You get up and you go to school every day or you go to the gym every day. or You go to work every day. For what? Why are you doing it? What is your purpose? People of substance, ladies and gentlemen, they live life on purpose. Never heard somebody say, I did that on purpose. All right. People of substance live their whole life on purpose. Everything has a purpose. Everything has a reason. They don't just do things just to do them. All right. People who lack substance, people who are going nowhere, do things just to do them. They do things because everybody else does it. They do things because that, that's what they've always done. All right. Again, these are phrases that you don't want to catch yourself saying or thinking or executing on. There's always a purpose behind your actions when you are a person of substance. You are never just drifting through life by default and just going wherever the wind blows you on autopilot. Okay, that's for people of failure, losers, people who have no goals. But you're not that type of person. So have somewhere to go. Know where you're going. If you've kind of lost your way at this point temporarily, then let this point get you back on course. Let this point be the wake up call to put you back to where you need to be. This is why in my book, The Mental Workbook, I helped you lay out what your goals are. What are your aims? What are you doing every single day? What is the statement that you're, you've made about your life, the person who you are, that you're aiming to become in the future, but you're going to state it as you are right now. I did all of that, laid all of that, that out for you in The Mental Workbook because anybody who's going to be successful in life has to have an aim. You have to have somewhere that you're going and there's a strategy like we talked about yesterday to actually getting there. So, yes, you have that that definite chief aim. But then there's all this space that needs to be filled in between where you are today and the aim you plan on getting to. Who knows? Tomorrow, next year, 20 years from now, what's going to fill in that space in between? That's what I talked about in the mental workbook. And it's also what we talked about deeply in yesterday's episode, talking about strategizing. Have yourself somewhere to go at all times. Point number three. Today's topic is how to become or how to be, how to stay, how to remain a person of substance. Build symbiotic relationships with other people of substance. See, the thing is, people of substance, they're usually building with other people who also have substance. Why? Because the law of association. We all know the law of association, right? What is the state? You become the average of the people you spend the most time with. It doesn't have to be five people. It could be 20. It could be two. It could be one person. 
You become the average of those people. Symbiotic definition is involving interaction between two different organisms living in close physical association. In other words, people of substance build relationships with other people who also have substance and both people benefit from the relationship. That's what it means. So you need to look at your, look at your list of contacts. Look at the favorites in your phone call log. Look at, the te- look at your text messages and who you're texting the most. Look at your emails, who you're exchanging the most emails with. Look at the people that you're DMing the most often on Snapchat or Instagram. Are they people of substance that you're talking to or are they people of nothingness that you're talking to? And let me, let me give you a hint. You ain't gonna have to think too hard about whether they're one or the other. If you gotta think hard about it, they're probably not a person of substance. People of substance are obvious. And you know this. Even if you never even thought of this phrase, being a person of substance, the first time you ever even thought of that phrase today, just by, just by the last 20 minutes of what we've been talking about, you know who a person of substance is and who a person of substance is not. And you can look at your associations and know if you're dealing with someone who is of substance and someone who is not of substance. It is not a hard, it's not a hard thing to figure out. All right, you know this. Now, it might not be easy for you to, uh, to swallow this fact, this truth, about some of your associations, maybe about yourself, but it is a truth and it is a fact. Now, you, it may be hard for you to swallow, it doesn't mean you can't, okay? People of substance have symbiotic relationships with other people of substance. So here's the tip that I'm giving you. People of substance have friends of substance. So when you meet a person and you're looking at their associations, you look at who they hang with, you look at who they talk to, ask yourself, all right, are there friends people of substance? Are their friends people who have somewhere that they're going? Do their friends have goals? Do their friends have outcomes? Do their friends know what they're doing? Are their friends lifelong learners? Are these people, do these people look like they're going somewhere and doing something? If I was to just get involved with what they were doing, would it make me better in any way, shape, or form? Your answers to those questions are straight up yes or no, and it wouldn't take you a long time to answer. And you need to look at yourself also. Before you go looking at everybody else, look at yourself. Look at your friends. Look at the people you hang with. Look at the people you were spending time with last weekend. Look at the people you've been texting all day. Are they people of substance? Are they going somewhere? Are they learning? Are they getting better? When's the last time one of your friends told you about something that they think would help you get better? Hmm. You got to think a little bit about that one. You got to look deep into your, your text message archives to even find one. All right, who are you associating yourself with? The law of association. You become the average of the people you spend the most time with. Now, you may be wondering, I've talked, I've given whole episodes to this next question I'm about to give you, but I'll answer it again for you. What if I don't have anyone around me who's a person of substance, but I want to become a person of substance, but I don't have any people around me. So how can I make the law of association work for me? Well, look, what do you listen to right now? Uh, Your association can be somebody you watch on YouTube or a podcast you subscribe to or a book that you read. Your association doesn't have to be somebody whose hand you can shake because they live three doors down from you. You can associate with somebody virtually. You can have virtual mentors. Haven't you heard? I've done five episodes of virtual mentors. People I've never met. I think I met one of them ever in person. I don't know any of them. They're not friends. I can't call them and have a conversation. But they've been, been virtual mentors as I followed them virtually. I followed them online. The world that we live in right now, the great thing for everyone listening to this, no matter how old you are, you can associate with whoever you want. Now, if you grew up in the 80s or the 90s, you were limited. Right? You had a limitation. All right? There was a serious problem that you had that the law of association, you kind of were affected by, by default. Because if you're stuck in a bad neighborhood and you got a whole bunch of losers in your family or as brothers and sisters and your moms and your dads, your uncles, aunts and cousins, they were all losers and they were going nowhere and they weren't lifelong learners and they didn't have any positive relationships with any one of the substance. You had no choice but to have them as associations. But the great thing now you can associate with whoever you want. Any YouTuber, any podcaster, any author, any blogger, any vlogger, any, I don't even know what the other things are, any Instagrammer. You could associate with whoever you want. You don't have to be limited to the people that are in your physical environment. Therefore, going back to our point here, we're still on point number three, the topic today again is being a person of substance. You need to have symbiotic relationships with other people who are of substance. All right. How is it symbiotic with a person that's virtual, though, you may ask, since you can't really do anything for them? Well, let me tell you what you are doing for them. You are helping them get better at sharpening their ability to convey what they know. You're helping them get better at communicating what they know. As I said 
in yesterday's episode, if you can't teach it, you don't know. I said it today, actually. If you can't teach it, you don't know it. Therefore, if someone has a, a YouTube channel or a podcast or they're writing books and you're reading them, you're consuming it, you are helping them get better at teaching what they know. Because if you can't, if they can't get their point across to you and you can't quite understand it, then they're not, they can't help you, first of all, and you can't help them. You help them by consuming their stuff and giving them feedback on it. So if you like what somebody's putting out there, you should let them know. And if you don't quite understand it, you should let them know that too. Because it'll help them sharpen their skills if they happen to be a person of substance. One of the, the challenges these days is that somebody who is not of substance can look like they are because they can start, they can share anything that they want, but they won't last because it'll be obvious that they have no substance. The more you put yourself out there, the more obvious it becomes who you are. Is this true or is it not true? That's the great thing. The, one of the drawbacks of the internet is anybody could be anybody, anybody could be anything. But one of the positives of the internet is that the more someone puts themselves out there, the more obvious it becomes who they really are. And you can't hide when you're out there. As someone once said, when you call for attention, you can't hang up. <laughs> All right. So this point, we're still on point three. People of substance have friends of substance. Do you have friends of substance? I'm spending a lot of time on this point and repeating the question because I really want you to think hard about this one. And this one is, this is one of the most important factors in your success in life. This is something that I've said before is that having the right relationships will do more for your success than having the right skills. This is a person who owns the, the brand, the name, work on your game. I'm telling you right now that knowing the right people and having the right people know you is more valuable than knowing the right skills and having the right information. Because when you have the right skills and the right information, there's only one person you can help with it right now, and that's you. Now, yes, you could get it out there to the world, but when other people know you and you know other people and they have a positive, uh, they have a positive feeling about you, a positive impression of you they can do things for you that you can never get around to doing simply because you don't have the time the talent or the energy to do it on your own that's why relationships are so important relationships help with knowledge and skill it is adding to your resume by addition one thing at a time new knowledge new skill you get better you get better you get better you get better this matters i'm not saying that this doesn't matter but that's what you're doing you're doing addition all right everybody understands addition right one plus one equals two at another one you get three at another one you get four shout out to dj Khaled. But relationships multiply your success. So you get one times two equals two. Two times two equals four. Four times four is eight. Eight times eight is 16. 16, actually no, eight, not eight times. What am I doing? See, now this is why I took math four times in college. Two times two is four. Four times two is eight. Eight times two is 16. You get the point. All right, you're, you're adding up exponentially. You're doing multiplication and exponents, not just addition. There's only so far you can go with addition. You're going to run out of time or run out of talent. But when you have the right relationships, you start multiplying your success. So who are your friends? People of substance. Look at their associations and you'll know who's who very easily. People of substance work with other people of substance. If you're in a startup at a company, you're probably not going to start it up with just any random clown. You're going to start up with somebody of substance who can bring something to the table. If you're a great salesperson, you need a person who can make a great product, a person who understands marketing, a person who understands the back end, the books, who can make sure your accounting is right so you don't get any, any type of money or numbers problem, problems. You need people who have substance in each of those areas so everything works the way it's supposed to work. People of substance choose people of substance as their partners in business. They choose people as their partners of substance in their intimate relationships, and they know other people of substance. Here's another way you know a person of substance, that when you talk to them, they're going to refer you. Usually people of substance will refer you to somebody else of substance that you should know or you should know about. When you talk to a person of substance, they should tell you, hey, you know what? Because you do this thing, you should probably know this person because they do that thing too, or they do something that could help you out. Or you know what? Since you do that, have you read this book? Or do you know about this podcast? Have you met this person over here? Have you ever gone to this meeting right here? Do you know about this group that meets every Thursday afternoon? Do you know about these things? Have you been to this place? A person of substance will always refer you to other people of substance. Why? Because they know people of substance. They can't help you, but they can't help but to refer you to them because those are the people that they know. Those are their associations. You see how all of this works together? See, when you meet a person and they can't refer you to anyone else of substance, that might be a red flag to you that they might not be a person of substance. I'm just telling you. Now, 
all of these things that I'm telling you, I'm talking about other people, but you should also flip this around and put the mirror on yourself. Do you know people of substance, places of substance, material of substance that you can refer other people to? Because they're listening to this and they're going to think the same about your ass if you're not referring people to things of substance and pe people and places and you know, information and material of substance. Point number four. Today's topic is how to be a person of substance. If you want to be this person of substance, you must offer substance to other people, as I just talked about. And this is what I mean. People of substance want you, when they meet you, they want you to do everything that we talked about so far today. They want to be around other people who are encouraged about learning and getting better and being lifelong learners and always growing. They want to be around people who like to read, people who study, people who update their own operating systems as far as your opinions, your beliefs, and the way that you think and the way that you act. They want to be around people who are willing to challenge their own beliefs and opinions. They will ask you about where you're going, what you're working on, and how they can help. A person of substance will ask you those questions. Who's the last person you talked to who asked you to one of those questions? Where are you going? What are you working on right now? How can I add value to what you're doing? People of substance ask these questions. And I'm pausing on that because I'm going to give you a moment to think if you know anyone who asked those questions of you. People of substance will encourage you to build relationships with and meet other people of substance. Why? Because they want to increase their network. They want to build a bigger network of people of substance so that everybody can help everybody else. They don't want to be the only person of substance in their circle because then it's not a circle. Then it's like then it's a, a period. Or they don't want that. They want to have as many people of substance around them as possible. So when they make you these offers, you should know this person. You should be doing this thing. What are you working on right now? How can I help you? How can I add value? They're trying to find out if you're a person of substance indirectly. All right, they're just doing what they naturally do. But if you don't have good answers to those questions, they're going to realize that you're not a person of substance. They may not consciously be thinking about it that way, but they're going to realize, OK, this person can't do anything. I can't do anything for them and they can't do anything for me. I can't help them get to where they're going because they ain't going nowhere. I can't help them get smarter because they're not trying to learn. I can't help them operate, up, update their operating system because they don't have an operating system. They just, they just floating by wherever the wind blows. That's where they go. They don't have a system. And you probably won't hear from that person again. They probably won't return your phone call. People of substance will encourage you to build relationships with and meet other people who also are of substance. Why? Because the circle gets bigger. Everybody wins. Everybody eats. People of substance will discourage you away from what I call, quote, empty calories, close quote. You know what empty calories are? That's things that you do. Well, in, in nutrition, empty calories are foods that you eat. And if you look at the, the nutrition label, technically there are calories in the food, but it's empty calories. It's not the kind of calories that fill you up. Ten minutes later, you're going to be hungry all over again after you eat that pack of candy or that candy bar. There are calories in it, but they're empty calories. They're not the kind of calories that make your body stronger or better or do anything good for you. They just satisfy you in a moment. Instant gratification. And what have we talked about? I believe it's episode 787. Time perspective. Successful people have a further out time perspective than unsuccessful people. Unsuccessful people only think about what they get right now. Successful people think about what can I do right now that's going to pay me off five years later. Empty calories are instant gratification. People of substance discourage you from instant gratification and empty calorie actions because they know they have a time perspective that goes further out than the loser person, than the person who's a failure. They discourage you from useless people. They discourage you from useless habits, bad habits, useless, not working ideas, bad energy. People of substance stay away from these things. And if they see you going towards them, they will try to discourage you away from them. They're not going to grab you and pull you away. Most of them won't. They'll let you do what you're going to do. They'll let you know how they feel. But if you just go and do it anyway, all right, don't be surprised when they don't call you back. People of substance are looking for other people of substance. Why? Because the way that they think is the wavelength that they're on is the energy that they're on. Everybody here has heard of the law of attraction, right? We talk the law of association. What's the law of attraction? The energy that you are radiating, the energy is radiating from you is exactly what you will attract. So if you find yourself attracting a whole bunch of people who have no substance, don't blame them. You need to listen to this episode again and see what mistakes you are making because you're attracting them to you for some reason. Let's recap today's topic, which is how to be and remain, if you already are, a person of substance. The definition that I'm giving you of person of substance, person who makes a room better. They increase the value of a room just by being in the room. No matter who is in that room, no matter where that room is, they increase the value of that room just by their very presence. This is a person of death. 
Point number one, keep learning. No living person is a finished product. You are alive, you are a work in progress. Read, study, converse with people you can learn from, converse with people who are on the same level as you, converse with people who can learn from you. Question your beliefs and opinions. Know that you don't know everything. Know that you know closer to nothing than you know everything. People of substance are always looking to grow. They allow, they never allow themselves to stagnate. They are always into change in a positive way because the only constant in life is change. They are driving that change. They're not allowing the change to drive them. Point number two, have somewhere to go, metaphorically speaking. In other words, have goals. What are you working on? You go to work every day. Why? What is your purpose? People of substance live their life on purpose. They are not just drifting by on autopilot. Point number three, people of substance build some symbiotic relationships with other people of substance. In other words, the law of association, a substantial person knows other substantial people. If you meet a person and they don't know anybody else of substance, they just might not be a person of substance. Maybe it's possible they could just be starting out on their journey so they haven't built those relationships yet, so they might be on their way. But look at all the, the context clues that go around it that I'm giving you here today and make the smart judgment about people to find out if they have substance or not. Here's a tip. People of substance usually have friends who have substance, all right? And they usually attract other people who have substance. And when they, a person of substance meets another person of substance, they usually have a substantial conversation. Why? Because it's substance mixing with substance. All, all it does is create more of it. People of substance work with people of substance. They choose people of substance as their business partners, as their intimate partners. They know other people of substance. Why? Again, law of association, law of attraction, both of them together is how substantial people know other substantial people. A person of substance will recommend that you get to know other people of substance. Why? Because it grows the circle. It makes them more powerful because they just added more power to the circle and it makes you better. And they want other people to get better because this is what they do in life. All right. It's just their operating system. They can't do anything else. Point number four, person of substance offers substance to other people. They want you to do everything we talked about here. They want you to learn, read, study, update your systems, challenge your beliefs and opinions. They will ask you about where you're going, what you're working on, and how they can help because this is what they do. This is how they became a person of substance. That's why they keep doing it. They will encourage you to build relationships, to meet new people. They will discourage you away from empty calories, useless people, habits, ideas, and energies. People of substance are looking for other people of substance with whom to associate with. When's the last time one of them came your way? Now, what's going on in the game group? If you want to make yourself into a person of substance, listen, you just listen to every episode of this podcast twice, take notes and act on just one thing out of each episode. I guarantee you 100% of your money back. You will be a person of substance. You'll be a person of amazing substance. You'll be overflowing with substance. And I'll tell you how you can access every single episode that's ever come out of this podcast. You see what number episode this is? I'll tell you how you can access all of them. All right. From number one. Go to workonmygame.com slash game group. Start your two-week free trial of the game group membership. And on top of what I just told you, you get. That's over 800 hours of material. I got a whole bunch of other stuff that I didn't even mention. I'm not even going to mention right now because it would add another 20 minutes to this episode. You will see. And I'm giving you a two-week free trial just so you can see for yourself what's in there. So I don't have to talk about it every single episode because it would take too much time to talk about. I want you to see it and feel it and experience it for yourself. So you could be a person of substance. You could join the club. There's plenty of room. Come join us. Work on your game. Dre all day.